sprints in Azure DevOps. So in this video, we're going to cover more specifically what are sprints in Azure DevOps and what are the features that you can use. So we'll cover how you get started with sprints, how you can set your dates, how you can assign items to specific sprints. We'll also cover how you can set your team and the capacity of your team to work over sprints, and then how to use your sprint board to track you know, the work items being delivered over the sprint and how your team is tracking day by day to deliver the items in the sprint capacity. And this video is just an extract of an end-to-end -end video tutorial that I created on Azure DevOps boards and how to create and manage requirements. So if you want to learn additional areas of Azure DevOps boards, take a look at the link in the description to access that full end-to-end -end video. Now let's get started with this one. So another feature that we're going to explore now is the sprint feature. So just a caveat here is that I don't use sprints for every single one of my projects. So it's often related to Scrum, specific Scrum projects, or where we need to have very detailed task assigned to members over a sprint, a very dedicated period of time. So if you have those kind of requirements, let me show you how you can leverage sprints in Azure DevOps. So sprints, if you first click on sprints, you won't see much, right? Actually, you won't see probably this will be completely empty. So the first thing that you have to do with sprints is you'll have to configure dates. So if you click on dates, you'll be able to specify the dates of your iteration. So you see this is iteration one. You can see all the iterations here. So what we'll do, we'll configure the dates for our iterations and then we will create a new iteration so that I can show you how that works, right? So let's say we configure iteration one that starts maybe from this Monday. We'll do a two week sprint this Monday to next Friday. Uh, save and close. Then I'll quickly do it for the other iterations as well. Now we can also add another sprint if you wanted to, and we can do iteration four. And as you can see now, DevOps detected kind of the pattern of your iteration. So it pre-filled already the start date and end date of that iteration four. So that's kind of an easy way for, for you to remember. So now we have the four sprints. If I go back to iteration one, I can see one user story. Why? Because that user story was already assigned before to iteration one. So you can see here iteration it was assigned to iteration one. It might be that you start a new project. This, this is completely empty, right? So the first thing you have to do is that you want to assign um, user stories to an iteration. So how to do that? If you go back to the backlog, and here you can see, uh, if you go back to the backlog, if you don't see planning here, you can easily switch that on and then switch on the planning. We'll switch between work details and planning in a sec, but let's stay on the planning. And then if I go back to my backlog, this will show you all my uh, product backlog with my epics feature and user stories, right? So before we continue, let me quickly add the iteration column so that I can very quickly see when I start planning my work items here, I can see exactly the column and what iteration they are assigned to. So I'll add another column called iteration path. Iteration path, make sure you select that one, that field. And I'll actually move it to just after the title so that I can see it, right? So you will now see that column, iteration path, and you will notice it's always the same, all the, all the same thing which are called iteration pad, which is the name of your project, right? That is the level one iteration. So if I open that item and if I click here on iteration, you will see that if I go down and untoggle that iteration, this is your level one iteration. Those are your level two iteration. You can have even level three. So within iteration one, you can have sub level of iteration. Look, I never use that uh, feature. I never go down more than those two levels. Um, so I'll, for this demo, I'll just stay to this. This is kind of your typical way you have your project name and then you have your iteration underneath with the dates, right? So one thing I want to also show on the board, on the product backlog with the columns is the level two iteration. So that when I start assigning items to iteration one, two, three, I can quickly see it on my product backlog. So let's do that here, column option. I'll go and do iteration level two. And again, I'll bring it here to the beginning and it should be empty. 
correct because we don't have really items just assigned there yet. If I just untoggle everything, I'll see some of my user stories. And you can see here, there is one user story assigned. That's the one we have seen on the sprint board, the review, scholarship review and approval process. If I go back to the board, you will see that this is the one we can see here. So that makes sense, right? So let's go back to the board and let's actually also remove that iteration path because I don't really need it. I just want to have my iteration level two here to work with. And I can see here that is this one is assigned to iteration one. So how does that work, right? So you can see here iteration one, planned work three, and then we have one user story. Why is it planned work three? Because you have a story point. I don't show them here on the column, but you can show story points if you wanted to. But you can see that there are three story points, right? So now let's say this one is actually a four story point and this one has a few child items. If I now drag and drop this one to iteration one, you will see that you have a quick view here of uh, the plan effort got added to seven and then you have two user stories, one task, one bug and so forth, right? So you can drag and drop those items to your iterations. Now I have three user stories. The plan effort hasn't been increased because I haven't specified the user stories for that, um, for that, uh, sorry, the story point for that user story, but I will leave it this way. So those are my three user story. That's enough for now, right? So if I go to the sprint, I can see my user stories and I can see my task, which my, is my child items of the user stories. My child are now visible on the sprint board. So how do you now work with a sprint board? So sprint board lets you do a few things, right? So you can follow, of course, the status of your tasks and bugs and you can move them from status. And very similar to the board, you can, of course, specify the fields on the task. You can add additional fields. You can specify your styling. Know that you can also tweak the columns and add additional columns if you wanted to or rename the column. I won't really do it here because it's quite similar to what we have done with the task board. And so another feature that we have on the sprint board is let me toggle first here the work details. This way I can see here the capacity of my team because that's what I want to do here is I want to go and specify the capacity of my team. So any user that are part of that team and your project will be shown here. And then you can specify, you know, the days they are off um, so that the capacity during the sprint is affected. But I want to specify the capacity per day in hours, right? So the admin works per day four hours and then the other two users work eight each, right? You can even specify here the type of activity, right? I don't really use that thing, but you can go to that level of granularity. But let me just save that here. So if now I save and I go back to my task board, so you can now see the work details view and it will show you how many hours are available for the team. Uh, it will show you unassigned items uh, here as well, the work by, by your team member. So you can see, because we have nine days left in that sprint because it started actually the 8th of September, we are the nine, so it started yesterday, gives you how many remaining hours are left, right? So how does that work, right? So you have to go and use the bugs and the task, and you can specify here the effort, right? So the, the original, Estimates how much time you think this would take. Let's say that takes 16 hours and the remaining time, because we haven't started, it's still 16. So you can actually work and you can see now that we have 16 hours of work and no one is assigned to that user story. So let me quickly assign it to Danny and then save it. And now you can see that Danny has been assigned 16 hours out, out of the capacity of 72. And as you assign tasks here, this will kind of, um, you know, increase if you go over. So let me create a task maybe for this user story. If I define a new item and I'll create a task, child task, create something, it doesn't really matter here, right? Because, and I want to assign this to Danny Admin, that's fine, I'm the creator of it. 
Original estimates, let's make this one pretty big. Let's do it 48 and remaining 48. If I save and close that, close that one, you will see that because we have assigned that users, that task, sorry, to let me refresh. Ah, there we go. You can see it because we have assigned that task to Danny, who, Danny admin, sorry, who has a capacity of 36, but that task requires 48. It kind of goes in red, right? So, as team members progress and start working, the next day you can come in and see the remaining capacity. So this kind of adapt and changes over time as your sprint progress. But let's say Danny now worked the whole day. So the remaining time is eight, completed eight, save. And you will see here now that this has been, you know, reflected. Now there's only eight, uh, remaining. So it really uses your remaining effort here to uh, calculate the capacity and how much work you can deliver over the sprint. Voila, I hope that you like this video. And if that's the case, subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more videos about Azure DevOps, exploring all these areas, and I'm really hoping to see you in the next one.